Letters for all the levels. Number of internal notes for all the levels. All right. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Right. So we we were here last time. Yeah. Next, we need to estimate the total cost to build a max heap. How much cost? If the cost is too high, then not worth it. So we we cannot use this algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But later you will see the the cost is big O of n. Big O of n. Then we can accept it. Yeah. Because the sorting big O of n log n. So we are willing to. So we treat this as the preparation cost. Big O of n, do preparation. Then sorting after that, n log n. Yeah. All right. But before we do that part, I want to first. I want to talk about, you know, your homework question. Your homework question. Have you started working on homework part two? Ah,、uh, two B, not two A. Yeah, two A. Two A. Two A. The quiz I extend the deadline to tomorrow. Okay,、uh, tomorrow one more day. Yeah. yeah, but you will finish that soon. So now you need to start working on two B. Yeah, part B. Yeah. yeah. So here. So let me, you know, open that file to be. Yeah. All right. So here I want to talk about. I want to talk about this question. Question number eighteen. Have you thought about that? Question number eighteen.、Yeah. So here the S N golden ratio two M plus one over two N. Now I ask you to derive a recurrence relation for this S N function. S N is some function.、Yeah. It has some value.、Yeah. But how do we get a recurrence relation for this function value? So let me give you the hint.、Yeah. Otherwise, you may feel hard. Okay, you may feel hard to do it.、Yeah. All right. So after you get my formula, not that hard.、Yeah. Key formula. Here, I just give you the key formula. Yeah. So let me use use one slide to explain that. Yeah. So this part of C. Yeah. The first slide. This empty slide. So I I show you the, you know. My hint formula. Yeah. All right. Yeah. S N definition of S N. Golden ratio, phi to the two n, but one over phi to the two n. This is the definition of the function.、Yeah. Now we need to write a recurrence. Relation. For S N, okay, yeah, recurrence relation for S N, yeah. All right, the key formula. Look at this.
we do this multiplication. Another one here is phi 2 times So let's multiply all four terms out and you know group related closely related terms. Yeah. All right. The first one the first one yeah. phi to the two n plus two. The second one here, phi to the 2n minus 2, right? Yeah. You know, different. Then, next one, you know, 2, right? Yeah. Plus, yeah. phi to the 2n minus 2 plus, V to the two and plus two. How about that? After this multiplication, you can see we get a structure. We get a structure. Do grouping. Yeah. So V to the two and plus two plus one over V to the two and also plus two. The first parenthesis, second, phi to the 2n minus 2 plus 1 over phi to the 2n minus 2. And this is sn plus 1, right? Based on our definition. This is S M minus one, right? Based on our definition. Here S N here S two, right? S two, yeah. But for S two, yeah, S two we can calculate its value, right? So what is S two? If we, if we like, can we find a value of S2? By some golden ratio property. So remember the golden ratio property. We have two property. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, you know, phi square equals one plus phi. That's one. Another is 1 equals phi squared minus phi. These two properties. Okay, all right. So the first phi squared, 1 plus phi. The second, yeah, 1 phi, minus, phi squared minus phi over phi squared. Okay? equals 1 plus phi plus 1 minus 1 over phi. Okay, all right. So 2 plus phi, 2 plus phi minus 1 over phi. 1 is phi square minus phi over phi, right? Okay, let's do some. 2 plus phi minus phi plus 1. Cross out equals 3. So S2 equals 3. Now, can you write this recurrence relation? Okay. Yeah. This is the hint. How to find recurrence relation? The main formula here. Yeah. 
All right. Alors. All right. So let's go back to the part of it. So we are here, so let me recall a little bit last time. All right. So last time, we find a formula. So in a max heap, the number of nodes of height h, height h, Hope you, you still you know the meaning of height h. Leaf nodes, leaf nodes, the height zero nodes. So then, one level higher, two level higher, each level higher. So those nodes, the number can be estimated less than or equal to this expression less than or equal to this expression. Yeah. The difference is very small. So the difference is at the most one, zero or one. Yeah. So when we use approximation, the difference is, you know, at the most one. Zero equal. Yeah. But a few cases, not zero, but that's one. One difference. Then we calculate the total building cost. Yeah. To build each level, to build level H, you need this much cost. Level H, that's this much cost. Yeah. Each node, you need big O of H cost. Yeah. Right? You know, because each level, constant, constant, number of operations, but you do at the most H steps, moving down, H steps, so that number, but you do multiplication, okay? You do mul so that's the, accumulate the building cost of all levels, that's the expression. That's the expression, all right? All right. But that expression, we do estimate, plus one. Because the seeding function, we want to estimate. The seeding, that notation is not convenient. So we want to remove the seeding function. To remove the seeding function, we add one, we take away the seeding function, but we need to, you know, add, you know, the difference part. Here we add one, it's more than the difference part, right? It's more than the difference part. So we get this inequality. Then we have two terms. This one term and this n over 2 to the h plus 1. So we have two terms. Right. Yeah, so the, we write the summation separately. Okay? Summation separated. First, let's estimate the second sum summation. Second summation, easy. Yeah. Easy to estimate. Yeah. All right. Each one h, but h changes from 1 through that number. Can we just uh, use the, our standard formula? So we get that. Yeah. So this expression is big O of log of n squared, log of n squared, the second summation. So let us leave there. Log of n squared, we know, it's relatively small. Much smaller than big O of n, right? Big O of n. 
much larger, much larger than big of log n squared. Yeah. All right. So our main term, the first term is our main term, estimate. So let's estimate the main term. In this estimation, this n is constant. This, that n never changes. When we do the summation, n never changes. n is fixed. n is a fixed number. Can we take, take n out? Yeah. So we can take n out. Yeah. Here, we also we ignore that big O. Yeah, big, big O, we just treat as constant, multiple. Okay? Some constant bound. Co constant bound. There is a constant bound. So we don't worry about the constant. So let's consider the function inside that big O. Here you can see we need to estimate this summation. All right. So let's estimate that. That summation, this upper limit, not very convenient. It's log function, right? Flow, log function, not convenient. Can we enlarge it to infinity? Yeah. Enlarge it to infinity, then it's easier to calculate that summation. Because there is no log. We don't like to deal with the log function. Yeah? So the log function is gone. Yeah. But we hope our Enlargement is not too generous. Not, you know, not increase that summation number too much. All right, so let's calculate the new summation. So this is the new summation, S. All right, so this summation, we need to use some technique. Use some special technique to find this summation. So look at this slide. Calculate the summation. All right. Can you see any special property of the summation? There is some special property we can take advantage of it. Mass summation. Special property. Look at the denominator. Denominator all power of two. Here, I, I need to turn off. Yeah, yeah because. <coughs> all right. Denominator all power of two. That's some good property. Look at the numerator. Numerator. They are consecutive integers. One, two, three, four, consecutive integers. Denominator power of two. So this structure we can explore to take advantage. Yeah. All right. One common way to work on, let us multiply two, both sides of the summation. Because then we will change the denominator. The denominator is still power of 2, but there is a shift. There is a term shift. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So now let's compare these two summations, s and 2s. Yeah. And compare their corresponding terms. The terms with the same denominator. You can see the numerator has one difference. One and a two, the difference is one. Second one, two and a three, difference is also one. And so on. Yeah. Yeah. All the way down to infinity, you have the, all these patterns. Let, let's take subtraction. Use the bottom summation, subtract the top summation, 
left hand side is S, right hand side, reciprocal of power of 2, consecutive reciprocal of power of 2. That's one. It's a geometric series. It's one. Okay? One half times one fourth time, uh, plus one fourth, one eighth, and so on to infinity. Yeah. We know there is a formula, right? Geometric series. Yeah. So here, yeah. the common ratio one half, the common ratio one half. Yeah. So one minus over one minus one half n to infinity. That's the formula. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because you know, and this goes to zero. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Initial. You know, we need to multiply the initial term. Initial is one half. Okay. Yeah. Initial value, the first term value, then multiply this. Okay. So one half equals one. All right, so that tells us that S, this S just equal to 1. Yeah, S equals to 1. Yeah. Then the building heap cost this term after we factor n out inside that summation 1, n times 1, big O of n. The first summation. Second summation, log n squared, much smaller than big O of n. So this is dominant term, dominant. So the final answer is, sorry, the building cost is big O of n. That's our estimate. Big O of n. Okay? Yeah. So it's acceptable. All right, yeah, all right. So now, when we are given an arbitrary array, first, we build the max heap. We use this much cost. So probably some constant multiple of n. Constant multiple of n. So we get a max heap. Next, we can do the heap sort. We work on the max heap to do the heap sort. B.3. Heap sort and efficiency analysis. Let's do the heap sort first. Very easy. Very easy. All right. Idea of the heap sort. Key observation. Here, let me use this simple diagram to show you the basic idea. All right. We assume we have a max heap. This is the max heap we built. Yeah. We already spent that big O of n to get this max heap. The first step. All right. Now, can you see the largest element is at the root? Or a max heap? Root element. O is the maximum, right? Yeah. When you know the maximum, what can you say for a sorting problem? The maximum element you can put it in place immediately, right? In place. You can move the maximum element in place immediately. All right. Yeah. So the max heap element is right there, that position. But that position, when you look at the heap array, the array you use to store the heap, max heap, what is the location of this root element? Yeah. The first element. In array index 1, right? So we, 
we don't look at the index zero element. So array index one element, that's the location. Yeah. If we use this line segment to represent that underlying storage array, yeah, its current location is at position one of this array. All right. But we want to put it in place. What is the position? Uh, it's in place position. N. N. Okay? Then one swap operation, we can put it in place, right? But we need to do a swap operation. Okay? All right. So the final location is at N. Current location, 1. Current location, 1. Final location, N. N. One swap operation. We put it in place. All right? Yeah. So if you look at the max heap, root, and the last, last node, you do a swap. Last leaf node, you do a swap. That's easy, right? Yeah. But if you do that, after you put it in place, you need to recover the max heap, right? Because it's not a max heap anymore. So you need to do some operation to recover max heap. How do you do it? Recover the max heap. So our first step, we swap A of 1 and A of N. But after that, recover the max heap. We have the op operation, right? Max heapify, remember? Yeah. Because only as a, the root node has a violation. Other than the root node, no violation, right? Only the root node has a violation. So when we apply the max heapify operation, we apply it on the root node. Okay? All the way down, and when we reach the bottom, we get it fixed. All right, so here we run the max heapify operation, sorry, at the root, at the root. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, after that, we get another, we, we get a, another max heap. Yeah. This time, the current root node, it's the second largest, right? Yeah, so we, another swap, we put it in place. <laughs> then another max heapify heap operation to fix it. Then another element in place, and so on. Keep doing this. At the end, we put all elements in place. That's the heap sort. That's the heap sort. Okay? All right. Procedure of heap sort. Iteration. We do iteration. When we start, build a max heap of A array. So you need a big O of N. First round, preparation cost. Big O of N. Okay, all right. So here. All right. Then, after that, for loop iterations. Here you can see we use for loop. We can avoid recursion, right? Yeah. So when we do the first step, build a max heap, you also you should use the for loop, avoid recursion. Because recursion, the step will be very deep, right? If you use the for loop, you do not need a deep stack. Yeah. All right. So then, swap A of 1, A of I, yeah, because your first I is N. Second, N minus 1. Okay? Yeah. Decrease, descending order. Then, your heap size reduced by 1. After you put one element in place, your current heap size should be reduced by 1. So that's this step. All right. Then, you do max heapify on A array 
but at the location one. Always at location one. And then you do iterations, for loop, like this. After you finish this for loop, you get a sorted array. You get array sorted. Okay? Yeah. Definitely, so this method, this method may not, yeah, it's not as fast as quick sort, but it satisfies our three requirements. First, first, right, n log n for the worst case. Yeah, n log n worst case. So no bottleneck. Yeah. Quick sort has a bottleneck. A square bottleneck. Uh, this one does not have that bottleneck. Okay, n log n, the worst case. Second, it's in place. Because yeah, we just use for loop. Yeah. So we other than you know the input output, we don't need too much uh, extra storage space. Yeah. And there is no deep stack. We avoid the deep stack. The second advantage. The third one, dynamic, right? It support dynamic structure. When you get a new element, new element comes in, can you put it in the heap and fix it? Yeah. The new element, you can put it at the end, right? And can you swap with the Element at the root, uh, not at the root. Yeah. So when you have a new element, yeah. When you have a new element, so you need to put, yeah, put it somewhere and fix it. And we want to, we want to have a log n step. Fixing that, yeah, right. Insertion, yeah. insertion, deletion. It should be, yeah, yeah, yeah. That part, yeah, yeah, a little complicated. Yeah, that part, yeah, a little com, yeah, because we need to do some operations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cannot do that swap yeah, because swap. It's not sorting. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, that operation. Can we put at the end, then we fix? Yeah, so that one, yeah. yeah. So there is a technical problem. Yeah. Put it at the end, so we know the violation, but this one looks, you know, moving up. Moving up. You know, that's something, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me double check that. Yeah. If moving up, if that method works, still, Log n, yeah, log n, yeah. But the problem, if we can cause some other violation, yeah. top down, we know, so that's fine, no violation. But bottom up, bottom up, max heapify, do we have that? Yeah. So th yeah, so that's the problem. Yeah. Okay, so we fix the triangle. So we fix a triangle, yeah. but the triangle start at the, the bottom triangle. Yeah. After we fix that, yeah. Yeah. because the parent node changes, you know, the parent node changes, then we need to you know, fix that triangle, another triangle, okay? another moving the bad triangle up, all the way down, all the way you know, up all the way up through the root node. Yeah. It looks like, it looks like fine. Yeah. 
but we need to make sure. Yeah, yeah we may need to look at a concrete example to see yeah, if if it works. Yeah. If it works, then insertion insertion can be fixed. Yeah. But deletion deletion is somewhere in the middle. You need to find it, right? First, you need to find it somewhere in the middle. You know, you know search. Find the location. Then delete it. After you delete it, you need to fix it. Okay? Yeah. Delete it, fix it. Then, so first you need to find the location. Okay? Do comparisons. Then find the location. Quickly. Then delete it. That node you can swap with the you know, the last one, then fix it. Yeah. So that part, not hard, but find it. So we need to look at how fast to find it. Yeah. So these things are about a dynamic, dynamic data maintenance. The cost maintaining the dynamic data. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'll double check that. So next time I'll give you an update. Yeah. Because we need to go back to our original, our design goals. Design goals. We want to see if the solution satisfies all our design goals, objectives. Yeah. All right. Then estimate. But here, to estimate the cost, build a heap this much, we leave there, then look at the for loop. The for loop, the first time we work on the root node, we do swap. That's one operation. After that, max heapify all the way down. Is it the cost? That max heap five, that's the log n. Yeah. All right. Then we did reduce the size by one. The next, next time we do the same thing. Next time log of n minus one. Right. Yeah. So all the way down to this log two. Yeah. We want to estimate the summation. This time, log. Consecutive integers, how to estimate the summation? Yes, log is zero, so it's gone. Yeah. All right. But can we generously, generous, because each term, right, each term less than or equal to log n, right? How many terms do we have? n minus 1 terms, right? n minus 1 terms, can we use n terms? So the all terms less than or equal to n times n log n, right? Log factorial? Factor n factorial too large, right? Yeah. So here, log factorial, yeah, so log factorial, yeah, good. So log factorial, do you know how much is the factorial? How large is the factorial? Yeah, yeah, log of factorial, but we want to estimate this formula. If you don't know the factorial estimate, how can you estimate log of factorial, right? The factorial, there is an estimate called a Stirling formula, but it's very complicated, very complicated, all right? Yeah, you can do it in that way, very complicated. But if you do that, use Stirling formula, you still get n log n. Yeah. Here, we avoid that Stirling formula. Yeah. So we don't, we don't use the Stirling formula, okay? So we use this simple way to estimate. Simple way to estimate, okay? All right, yeah, all right. But, because 
our estimate is too rough, right? Too rough. That means our estimate is too generous. Too, too generous. Yeah. So the question is, is it possible to do the estimate better than this n log n? Better than this n log n? No. Yes, there is an algorithm. There is a method to do that. Use integral. Use integral to, to estimate. Integral. Okay? Yeah. So the idea is like this. We draw log function the curve. So you know the log function. Yeah, so let me draw better. Okay. Because 1 is here. The log function you pass through this 1 and up. Then you 2, 3, you draw. 2 here, 3, and so on. Okay? All right. Log 2, how large is the log 2? Can you see the rectangular area is log 2? Can you see rectangular area is log 3? And so on. So you draw all these rectangular areas. Okay? Yeah. The summation of rectangular, are they this series? This original series summation? Yeah. All right? Yeah. So this one, but, but these areas very close to the integral from 1 through infinity. Yeah. Yeah. Because the log function, you know, log function, yeah, so here, you know, one log one, yeah. yeah. So here, actually, it's not infinity, because we need to divide. All right, yeah. we need to divide the area, you know, into pieces, yeah. from A to B into n pieces. Okay, yeah, n pieces. So use that integral, we can calculate the summation. Yeah, but, but here too much math, so I skip that. But the answer. Answer you will see still n log n. Answer is still n log n. Yeah. 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 So before I talk about, you know, uh, many years ago, I talked about the, you know, integral estimate. Yeah. yeah. But recent years, I feel, you know, too much math. Okay. So too much math. So we just use the simple way to estimate. So this, we do not need to do integral. We still get n log n estimate. Yeah. But here I mentioned that integral, just let you know this, e this estimate is the best, already the best. We cannot improve. This n log n, the heap sort here, n log n, that's the best we can get. Okay? The best we can get. Yeah. All right. So that's the heap sort. Yeah. So I think that's the end. Yeah, that's the end of part of it. Yeah. So we finished the heap sort. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So then, uh, in our final, uh, in our final, we still we have two parts: part A, part B. Yeah. Part A still as a quiz, you know, quiz format. Give you one week to to do it. Yeah. So I can post it, you know, a little earlier than our official quiz time. Yeah. Because we, we treat it as a quiz. Yeah. yeah. So we cover this module five. Okay. Heap sort and hashing. So we will continue to do the hashing part. Heap sort and hashing. So that is our part A. You know, uh, concept questions, ten concept questions. So then, part B. Yeah. So part B, yeah. we need to cover yeah the content after midterm. So after midterm, okay, yeah. So the uh, after midterm. Uh, Officially, officially, the 
part after midterm, we have 2.5 modules. Before midterm, 2.5 modules. After midterm, also 2.5 modules. 2.5 modules, what I say officially, all right? So that is one half of module three, module three CD. Module three C part C part D, that's after midterm. Okay. So module three C D included C D included then module four and five. Whole module four and whole module five. That's for the final. Okay, okay. Yeah, not accumulated. Not accumulated, yeah. But although not accumulated, uh, but remember, the midterm, many students, they have, they missed many problem-solving questions, right? Yeah, problem solving. So I asked them to practice first the second chance. So you study, you understand the solution. So you do the second chance to get up to 50% points back. Yeah, because my goal, I want you, you can solve those old problems. You do a lot of practice. You can solve those old problem, old problems solving questions. Yeah. So the final, although not accumulated, but I may give you a few, you know, midterm practice questions. I want to check if you can solve again or not. But that number should be, you know, relatively small. Okay? Two or three questions. Two or three, because our problem solving question, we have 15 questions. We have 15 questions. Yeah, the total. 15 questions. Two or three, I want to check you, your understanding another time about those midterm questions, but you missed a lot. You know, most of you missed no questions. So I want to double check it. Okay? Double check it. Yeah. So then, so you may see a few uh, old questions. Okay? Yeah. So, you know, so you need to still, you need to, you know, practice a little bit. So when you work, so actually your homework assignment two, part B, I already give you old questions, right? Yeah, several old questions. So I want to check homework to be, I already I want to see your study result because when you study, you, you have the second chance you need to study. You need to study. But how well you study the old problem solving solutions. So I want to check first time homework Two, part B, second time, final, part B. Check twice to make sure you can solve those old questions. Yeah. All right? So just let you know, okay? Yeah. After this many rounds practice, yeah, hopefully you can do those basic questions well after you Because some students, yeah, some students, they can already solve those. So they, they keep, keep seeing the same, same type of questions, right? Yeah. 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 Because for those, you know, students who couldn't do it. So that's the reason I give the same type of questions so many times. Because for those students who couldn't do those questions well. That's the reason. Okay? But for other students, so, so, you know, they feel boring. Yeah, why, why they solve those questions so many times? Right? They feel boring. Yeah. 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 All right? Yeah. Okay. So let's move to part C new topic. Hashin. Hashin search algorithm. Yeah. 
RC. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, ju we just did, did that hint. Okay. We ju just did that hint. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Introduction to hashing. C.1, why using hashing? So let me you know, give you the background information about hashing. Actually, this method is very important. So you have to have, you have, to have the knowledge, the basic knowledge of this search algorithm. So this problem belongs to the search. You know, the basic algorithm search type. Yeah. Search, we learn three, the first one, the first one, linear search, sequential search, right? Yeah. Linear sequential search. Second, binary search. Third, hashing. Hashing. Third, search algorithm. Yeah. So you need to know that. Yeah. And this we treat as advanced because we need to build a data structure. For the first two, you don't need an advanced data structure. You just use the array. Here, there is a data structure building step you need to do. Okay, all right. All right, so after this slide, how to find data item with a given key. So let me do the introduction part. Yeah. All right. yeah. So we don't have much time, yeah. 20 minutes. Less than 20 minutes, yeah. So let me just talk about, you know, the motivation part, yeah. Let me use 20 minutes to give you the motivation part of the hashing technique, yeah. All right. When we start, yeah, so here, given a collection of data dynamically, yeah, connect, yeah. So insertion, deletion, yeah. yeah. So here, you know, what we need to do? When conversion cost is low and the deletion cost also low, yeah. Yeah. this data structure can get that objective easily. Yeah. Insertion, yeah. so let me, the insertion cost better than Binary search. Binary search insertion cost very good, right? And a log n. Here, insertion cost average. Here, I do not say the worst case. Worst, worst case could be bad. The average case, big O of 1. Insertion cost big O of 1, average. Okay? Average insertion cost, big O of 1. Deletion cost, average case also big O of 1. Better than binary search. Yeah. So how can we do that? Yeah. So the idea is very interesting. I, idea, very simple, but the performance is so good. Yeah. Here, let's recall. Let's recall. Yeah, before I go further, let me refresh your memory a little bit. In our module one, we solved one Simple computing problem. Yeah. So if you still remember, element uniqueness problem. Do you still remember that? Element uniqueness problem. Given an element of array, how to detect if this element contains, sorry, if this array contains the elements, they are not duplicate. All uniqueness, all the elements stored in this array are unique. How to solve that? In our module one, we did, did this one, did solve this problem. Okay? Remember, we use two methods to solve, and we compare those two methods. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. yeah, probably module two or one, you know. Yeah, yeah. just, uh, you know, yeah. All right. Then, 
The first method, we do not sort array. We just do comparisons directly, so we get n squared. The second one, we sort it. We sort it. Before we do the comparison, we sort it. So we need to use n log n to sort it. After that, we do local comparison, an adjacent comparison, to check uniqueness or duplicate elements. That's n log n. The first one, n squared. Second one, n log n, is better than the first one. After that, I said, I talked about, I mentioned this. If we can use hashing, we can do better. We can do better than n log n. If we do hashing, if we use the hashing technique, yeah. we need to build a hash first, right? So we need to build a hash. Then we, we need to search. We build and search because the hashing, hash table build operation is bigger of n. Bigger of n. But the search is bigger of 1. So bigger of n and bigger of 1. So the total cost big O of n. It's better than big of n log n, right? Yeah. So this hashing based algorithm would be faster than the previous two. And this element uniqueness problem, that's one of the interview questions. Remember many companies, you know, especially those top tier companies, yeah, when they hire programmers, they need to give the programmer, the candidates, a set of algorithm questions. So they call the interview questions. Yeah. Other than you know, the general interview question, but they will check how strong so you're you know, in programming. So you need to solve a few algorithm questions. This is one of the interview questions. But this people treat as the relatively easier interview questions. Okay? Yeah. But interview questions, so you know, some people use star, you know, first star, second star, you know, hardest five star questions. Yeah. So this could be treated as you know, two star questions. Two star. Yeah. So not very hard, but the best solution is using this Hessian method. Hessian technique. Yeah. If you use the sorting way, yeah, still you have chance. If you use the you know, direct comparison, you, you don't have chance. So you're gone. Okay? You cannot be accepted. Yeah. Sorting way, still. Yeah, you know, but if you use Hessian way, big plus. Yeah. So you know a lot. Okay? You really you have you know, good preparation in your algorithm. Good background, so you will get a you know, big plus. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Things like that. Yeah. Definitely, there are many more challenging interview questions. Some interview questions are very challenging. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. probably I can, yeah, because uh, remaining of the semesters, I may have a little time. So I can show you a few more interview questions. Okay, the Google interview questions. You know, you know, yeah. some questions are very interesting. Yeah, just uh, they want to check your intelligence. Yeah. how strong is your problem solving skills? Yeah. because they are top top tier companies. You know, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, those top tier. You know, IT companies. So they want to really find strong problem solvers in algorithms. Yeah. So I may give, give you two or three interview questions. Yeah. Because we still, we, we, we have some time. We have some time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Each data item is identified with a unique key, search key. Search key must be unique. Yeah. Yeah. So that's easy. Yeah. So we know. Yeah. So when we store our data, so we can use unique key values. Yeah. All right. Question, how to make your data search efficiently? Yeah. 
All right. So we have the binary search, but binary search, we need to do the sorting first, right? If you do not have all the data, how do you do the binary search? Yeah. But another thing that's not good for the binary search, when you maintain the data dynamically, when you need to recover the order, if, yeah, because when new data items comes in, you need to make it order, sorted, ordered, the cost is too high. Yeah. The cost usually it's it's too high. Okay. So that that's a big disadvantage. Yeah. So we want to find another better solution. Yeah. All right. Data structure is not given here. You have freedom to choose your data structure. In order to do much better, yeah, sometimes ordinary data structures, that's the array, a typically array, yeah, you know, cannot give you the good solution. Yeah. So you need to consider an advanced data structure. So yeah, here, we need to work from there advanced data structure. Yeah. All right. You have freedom to choose your data structure. Okay? So you want to really consider the data structure with some special properties. Yeah. All right. Handle dynamic data efficiently. Yeah. Search deletion efficiently. Yeah. All right. Here, let me do this chart you know, try to get some idea. Inspiration, we need inspiration for this new search algorithm. Yeah, so 10 minutes. All right. Linear search, binary search. Then I add a new search algorithm called index search. So I'll talk about this index search. Yeah. Although, so not many people talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Index search, but it's interesting. All right, let's look at the data structure. So for the linear search, it's array, binary search, array, index search, also array. Yeah. Performance, linear search, big O of N, binary search, big O of log N, and index search, big O of 1. Yeah. So what's the index search? Given array, all right? So you store your data given array, your search key is the array index. So you use the search key as array index, you find array element, that's big of one, right? Yeah, that's very fast, but it has some severe problem. That's why it's, it's useless, okay? So in the real world, the search algorithm is useless. So that's the reason you never, you never heard of that, okay? Yeah, so not many people know that, yeah, because it's useless. But we get strong inspiration from this useless search algorithm, okay? Even if it's useless, but we have some, you know, this Hessian got inspiration from this useless one. Yeah. Ordering, unordered for array, for binary search, ordered, Index search unordered. Yeah. Ordered, yeah, so we like to have the data structure support unordered, right? Ordered, you know, for dynamic data, then too much cost. Too much maintaining cost for ordered data, for dynamic ordered data. So that's why we want to find a structure that support unordered array. Dynamic, dynamically, yeah. All right. Dynamic data, yes, costly. For binary search, if you want to use it, maintain dynamic data, cost too high, okay? All right. So for other, yeah, so you can, you know, maintain dynamic data, not that high, with, of high cost. Efficient sorting, yeah. 
So if you want to do sorting, no, no efficient sorting. Yeah. But binary search, you maintain the order information, so the sorting is efficient. Yeah, but for others, without order, ordering maintenance, then it's not efficient. Okay. Then our new idea. So when we design our new search algorithm, so we want to, you know, using the properties from index search. So the new data structure, we need to design it. And the performance, the search performance, we want to have bigger of one. All right. Data, unordered, supporting unordered data, dynamic data support, yes. Low cost support, yes, but efficient sorting must be no. Yeah. Yeah. The thing, the reason is very simple. You cannot get something that's good for all aspects, right? It's impossible. Okay? Yeah. You have to sacrifice somewhere. Yeah. So when you design, so you want to, because it's a trade-off issue. Trade-off issue. You cannot get some algorithm that performs excellent on all aspects. No. Yeah. In certain aspects, you have to sacrifice. Yeah. So this new sorting algorithm for the efficient sorting aspect, it's not fast. It, it is slow. Yeah. So, yeah. Other than that, all other aspects, all good. All extremely good. So that's the, you know, our design goals, yeah. design objectives. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Next, yeah. we need to look at the details of this new search algorithm. But when we start, because we need to get inspiration from idea of index search. So let's look at index search first. Yeah. And uh, what is its main disadvantage? And how to fix that disadvantage? Then we get this new search algorithm. Okay. All right. Generalize the idea of the index search. First, I want to show you a simple example using that index search. And let's see how bad it is. Direct addressing. Here we apply some special addressing method we call a direct addressing. Yeah. So this index search, if you look at it, our textbook, uh, it does not use this index search name. It's called a direct addressing. Okay? Yeah. Array, use the array indexes directly as the addresses of your array location, you know, element locations. All right. Key property of this method. Yeah. So you use, how do you use your keys? You use the array indexes as your search keys directly. That's the main property. Yeah. Array indexes. Okay? Yeah. So giving an array, so in other words, in other words, you know, backward, in other words, given search key, you use your search key as the array indexes, array locations to store your data. That's the direct addressing. Okay? Search keys, you use them as the array indexes. Yeah. All right. Main problem, when keys are long, because sometimes your search keys could be long, right? Yeah. Think about if our search key to search a person information, we use student number, for example, or we use social security number as the search keys. That, you know, so many digits, large number of digits. If you use those search keys as array indexes, how large is your array? 
Think about that. That's the reason this method is useless. This searching algorithm is basically useless. You don't want to use that much storage space to store your data. But you only have a small number of elements. So the storage method is not efficient. You cannot find an efficient way to store your data. So you waste a lot of space. Yeah, so that's the reason nobody uses it in the real world applications. Yeah. Next question, how to use space efficiently? We want to improve. So we, so we want to take the fast search property, so we want to keep that property, but at the same time, we want to make the storage side, you know, not very efficient, wasting a lot of space, we want to fix that problem. If we can fix that problem, then we have a new good search algorithm. So that's the design idea. Okay? All right. So next time, I will explain the design details. So how to fix and how to get an efficient search algorithm. Okay, yeah, so the remaining part of the hashing method. Yeah. All right, so that's it.